This episode of the Real Rescue Podcast is brought to you by SR3 Rescue Concepts because you don't know what you don't know. Life Saving Systems Corporation, we do our work so you can do yours. Tough gear for tough jobs. Breeze Eastern, the world's only dedicated hoist and winch provider. And Hilo Vodka, simply better vodka. SR3 Rescue Concept is a training company that can help you with your helicopter training, a standardization and safety check, or maybe just an audit or an FAA refresher. They're ready to bring your agency up to date with current techniques, rules, regulations, and equipment. The training staff is amazing! With certified and flight instructor pilots, experienced crew members, which I'm happy to say that I get to be one of them, They offer training in rescue, medical, tactical, firefighting, ground operations, and night vision goggle use. SR3 has partnered with Petzl to assist with the PPE inspection course and the highly specific Lazard, which is used in helicopter cliff and mountain rescues. SR3 goes above and beyond the helicopter world too. They also provide high angle rescue training and tactical medicine training. Contact them today at sr3rescueconcepts.com that's sr3rescueconcepts.com and follow them on Instagram at sr3 underscore rescue that's sr3 underscore rescue we're also brought to you by Life Saving System Corporation they manufacture the world's toughest helicopter rescue gear from my favorite harness as a rescueman the Triton to the rescue baskets and litters, and of course, the most popular hoist hook in helicopters, the D-Lock. The team at LSC cuts, bends, welds, sews, and machines these products into existence every day and then sends them on their way to us. We do our work so you can do yours. LSC, tough gear for tough jobs. Check them out today at lifesavingsystems.com. That's lifesavingsystems.com. And follow them on Instagram at R E S Q G E A R. That's at R E S Q G E A R. We're also brought to you by Breeze Eastern. Since the very first helicopter rescue in November 1945, Breeze Eastern has designed and manufactured superior rescue hoist solutions. While much of the technology and unique mission requirements have changed over the past 75 years, their commitment to the rescuers, the operators, and those who get rescued has not. Contact Breeze Eastern today by visiting them at breeze-eastern.com. That's breeze-eastern.com. And we are brought to you by Hilo Vodka. Hilo Vodka is a premium craft vodka made from the highest quality ingredients and six times distilled. Hilo Vodka was made to be crisp, refreshing, and unintrusive. It's exactly how vodka should be made, clean enough to drink neat and worthy to be mixed with your favorite cocktails. They make a crisp, refreshing vodka that is carefully carbon filtered for a smooth sip and no bite. Hilo Vodka is proudly 100% American made and veteran owned. Simply better vodka. Order yours today by visiting HiloShopVodka.com. That's HiloShopVodka.com. FedEx delivery is available in most states. Use the promo code CAPITALS, R-E-S-Q, and you get 10% off your order. Plus, if you buy three bottles or more, it's free shipping. Please remember to drink responsibly, and FAA Part 91 says eight hours, bottle the throttle. Our next guest is Sammy Olila. He was on the last episode with Risto telling us all about how Euros got started. I was so excited to have him back so that he could share his own rescues and his own stories from Finland and the Finnish border guard. They're awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I did. My name is Jason Quinn. I am United States Coast Guard Rescue Swimmer number 500. These are my rescues and rescues from those of us that put our lives on the line every day so others may live. This is The Real Rescue Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Real Rescue Podcast. I have with me again, coming back to me, 
Like we just heard an episode from this guy. It's amazing what they're doing in Finland. My friend, Sammy Olila. What's up, Sammy? How are you? Hello, Jason. I'm good. Glad, good. glad, glad to be back here. Again. Dude, I, man, your, your last episode is as far as how your Rosa got started. I am psyched to have you back on to even get further in detail with what you guys do there in, uh, in Finland and the Finnish border guard. It's, it's awesome. Um, so I, I know you've kind of already introduced yourself to everybody from the last episode, but if you don't mind, could you do it again, just for those that missed that last episode. And if you did this in the last episode, go back and listen to it. Cause it's pretty freaking cool. So hit it, Sammy. Okay. So my name is Sammy Olila. Uh, I was actually born in Sweden in the, in the border between Finland and Sweden. Uh, but I'm, I'm still of Finnish nationality. My parents are both Finnish. And uh, yeah, well, I've been working as a rescue swimmer and now as a paramedic with the Finnish border guard for almost 20, uh, 24 years at least. Yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, how it, how, how it all started, I was basically, I did my, in, in Finland, we have this, obligation to do a conscription service for the military for all all males that uh, turn 18 uh, have to uh, get involved in this and uh, and now it's also voluntary for for women in Finland and uh, yeah so you have different choices where where you can apply to do your conscription and uh, I initially uh, applied for for uh, for a combat flight school program that we have for conscripts also in Finland is is basic basic uh, flying basic flying uh, studies that they do there and uh, I didn't get in there and uh, after that I thought that I I still wanted to do something meaningful with the conscription and uh, I applied for the Finnish Navy divers. Nice. And uh, and uh, I got accepted to that program, and uh, it's 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 a per- pretty uh, rough uh, application. Uh, you have to go through a five day physical uh, sort of testing regime to to get in there, and it's only about twenty guys annually that get accepted to this course. Wow. Now, real quick, so, are you talking diving as in like scuba tanks and full equipment to go deep? Or are you talking rescue yeah. cover on surface? Yeah, they have uh, sort of two branches there. It's uh, One is like combat divers. You could maybe slightly compare them to the stuff that Navy SEALs do. Uh, their diving is more, more uh, sort of getting their way underwater not getting detected you know in a yeah, way yeah 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 with 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 oxygen oxygen uh, 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 closed circuit diving devices and uh, the other branch is mine clearance diving and uh, mine I was in this uh, mine clearance divers and uh, they they their diving is more towards the work diving they dive with helmets and uh, closed circuit uh, uh, mixed gas uh, devices that uh, you can go a little bit deeper to. Wow, nice. All right, I'm a little familiar with that only because I work with a uh, pararescue guy and he's talked to me all about that stuff. Um, Very cool, very cool, good for you. Yeah, yeah, so that's, I I think that's where it all started. Uh, me coming a rescue swimmer as I uh, uh, sort of ended my conscription, uh, there was an opportunity to apply for a rescue swimmer program right after I got out of the military. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I took that chance as well. I, of course, applied to different studies, but uh, this sort of so I got in. I, I got in that time, and uh, yeah, that's when it started, 1996. 
Nice. I was just graduating high school. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say for me at that time. It's hey. my uh, first, first and only occupation. Being Perfect. A so. What a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so now you get into search and rescue and, uh, you know, we heard some of the stuff that you guys did on the last episode, but you personally, um, what was your very first case? Like as a rescue swimmer? Uh, well, I have to be honest that uh, I might be lying here that I, I can tell you about the first SAR case that I remember. The first actual case could be like a normal search mission out on the sea with no results or something like that. Well, I appreciate the honesty, but, uh, okay? Now we are yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but this is this the case sort of has stuck in my mind because it, it was the first actual case it was a medivac mission from a cargo vessel and uh, there was a crewman uh, of that vessel that had had fallen uh, seven meters to an empty cargo space from the from the deck of the ship and uh, yeah so we were Ouch. asked to do this medivac and uh, uh, we also boarded the helicopter with with a hence doctor to assist assist there and uh, yeah well we we got the call we got on scene and uh, we spotted immediately that it would be difficult to winch this person with a stretcher straight from the cargo space because it was seven meters from from the deck and uh, there was some high high cranes surrounding this uh, hatch that was open. So he was so, in the hatch seven meters, which is about 21 yeah. feet for all my Imperial friends. 21 feet yeah. below deck. So basically if you were gonna winch out, you were gonna have to go in the hole like of the yeah, ship. Yeah, exactly. Oh my yeah. good Lord. So so that 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 would be a problem uh, in many ways. Also guy, uh, handling the guideline will be sort of uh, even even the guideline might not uh, be enough length in in the line for the hoist and uh, and uh, so so uh, we got we got to the scene and uh, the doctor quickly made an assessment of the patient he was uh, unconscious and coughing blood blood there and uh, as we made our, our way uh, well first of all I have to tell you about when we got to the scene and. Uh, the doctor boarded the helicopter. We, I, I talked with the doctor that uh, we are going to a to a vessel now that uh, there might not be a landing area for the helicopter, so we have to go down with the with the hoist. And uh, the doctor was sort of surprised in that moment. He had never done it, and he was totally totally out of, out of the woods in this in this sense. So. So uh, I just, wow. uh, he, he, he told me that uh, he maybe could stay in, in the helicopter as we would retrieve the patient from the, from the, from the cargo vessel. And uh, I just told him that uh, maybe it's better that we prepare ourselves in a way that uh, I would brief him about the actions when we do the hoist and, uh, and he would sort of be, so we have the option for him to come along to the, to the vessel. Nice. So we, we did a big quick brief and uh, we got down safely. And uh, as we were making our way to, to the patient, it was this uh, vertical, uh, uh, very tight vertical stairs that you typically have in this sort of vessel. So as we were making our way, the doctor suddenly told me that he's He's, he's really not used to this Rambo stuff. And uh, he was sort of stressed <laughs> he, out. Hold and, on, wait a minute. He's not used yeah. to this Rambo stuff? I love the yeah. reference. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dog. Yeah. This is what we do on a daily basis. How do I keep up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, oh, anyway, I, it was sort of sort of uh, a mark for me that uh, – he, he was obviously stressed, stressed about the situation and I was also, so I have to kind of step up a little bit in that 
in, in, the, in that sense to, to keep things, things in order. And uh, yeah, I was, I was 22 years old, I think, 21. At that time, I had absolutely no experience in any kind of rescue missions, not, not alone with, with the helicopter. So oh, you can my. also uh, wow. relate to the stress that I was experiencing <laughs> at, at that time. Just throw it right to the blades. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. So we we got got the patient safely on board the helicopter and transferred him to the hospital. And uh, yeah, that's it. Not nothing nothing major uh, regarding the winch operation itself. Or if everything went pretty smoothly, we. We had some uh, language barriers with the, with the crew members on the vessel. They didn't speak English, and uh, we didn't have a common language to speak. So we had to sort of make our way with hand signals and so on. So we decided to use the ship's own cranes to winch the uh, the litter on deck, and then we would proceed from the deck with with the helicopter winch. What a great idea. Helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Um, out of curiosity, did you guys have enough time or did the helicopter need to leave to refuel and come back? Uh, no, no, they, they could stay there. It was, it was not, it's not that far. The, the sea area between Finland and uh, Estonia is only like uh, 80 kilometers or so. Nice. So it, when you're in, in the middle of Gulf of Finland, you're only like, 40 kilometers away from from shore so oh that's that's not bad at all okay yeah. so you can kind of fly yeah. in any direction and be yeah relatively safe oh that's good yeah and then there's also a lot of islands there so in case we would use a lot of time that usually the pilots seek for for an island that they can land on and wait and maybe even turn off their engines and, and wait to save fuel if if it's if it's that type of a mission that yeah. they need to Thank you. Wow. Nice. Well done. That's a good idea. <laughs> I, you know, like using the boat cranes, it's, you know, when you're on scene, you got to start thinking about every option possible. Um, man, that's, especially when you're trying to like hoist out of the hole, that's, you know, you, yeah. If there's a safer way to do it, a better way to do it, you know, um, I, I'm not opposed yeah. to both doing the confined area. It just gets a little more, technical when you get down now you're 20 feet yeah. or seven meters into a hole and now you're pulling them out um yeah that gets yeah. that gets interesting so yeah but nice yeah. well done sir well, that's oh thank you yeah that's my first first case <laughs> that i <laughs> remember first one you remember i like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it, it's funny i uh i ask you like I ask everybody when they come on, you know, any letters and awards or articles that might have been written. And you, you actually told me something kind of funny. You're like, yeah, the Finnish culture doesn't quite do that. So <laughs> if you yeah, don't mind, it's, it's, tell, yeah, it's, tell it's us. It's true. I, I think, I think the, the Finnish mentality is, uh, is, is in a way that uh, we are maybe, maybe too humble in a way. Then uh, we don't, uh, uh, we don't have this in our culture that we sort of give medals of, of any 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 rescue. And if you happen to get a medal from something you have done, you can really really appreciate it. So very yeah. nice, very nice. I, I like that. You know, it's you know I talk about this quite a bit with a lot of our guys and myself included. Is that you know when people ask like, oh, where are your awards? They're in a box. Or, you know, they're up in the attic, they're in the garage, they're in the basement. They're just, it's, it's kind of the way we are. We don't, we don't boast about what we do. And I, and I appreciate that for you guys, as far as the culture in general, man, that that's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah. I, again, I appreciate you being on here and being w willing to share some of the stuff that you guys yeah. do out there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I don't, I don't believe any, anyone in the branch does it, does this job for medals and no. awards. Yeah, agreed. That's the fact. No, it, it could be, uh, and, and we say that quite often. It's it could be anybody's day. It's just your day. Yeah. 
and you yeah you're yeah, qualified exactly. to go do it so go get it yeah. done <laughs> yeah yeah nice exactly so you uh you also have a couple other stories that stand out to you um uh, again you know no awards no write-ups or anything but they they stand out uh, so what do you what are yeah. some of those yeah i uh when i think of of, of, of the cases i have one uh also, so it's in the early early days. Uh, at this stage, when I when I started the to, uh, the work as a rescue swimmer, we, we flew with with uh, the four four one two, okay. the four man crew. And uh, there's one actual actually one one mission that uh, I remember uh, we uh, we we got a call for a guy who had. Uh, uh, gone on on rocks with a, with a boat and uh, he had uh, got managed to get him into an island and uh, we just got a mission to go and evacuate this person and uh, it was like nothing big we just go there and pick him up and take him take him home so to speak okay so uh, when we got on scene uh, we fi- found this uh, man in the island and uh, I went down and I made, made like a quick assessment uh, on what stage he is. And uh, uh, he, he looked really pale, like really white, white. And uh, I just started talking to him and asking uh, what had happened. And I spotted some little bit of blood in his, in his clothes. And I asked him, what, where, did, did, where did this blood come from? And he said he maybe just uh, hit, hit the rock or something when he was climbing to the island. And uh, out of some intuition, I, I opened his jacket and looked at his skin uh, if I could so, see, uh, spot any, any, any signs of trauma in this person. And I just saw a little, little uh, spot in the, in the chest, in the middle of the chest, and uh, looked, looked like more like, a, like a sc- just a scratch. And uh, well, we just uh, then uh, uh, we, I took a strap and we uh, started winching the person uh, as a as a double hoist, me escorting the person up. And uh, in the middle of the hoist, uh, this person goes unconscious oh, and boy. starts to sort of slip a uh, little bit slip out of the strap. And uh, we were really struggling with him uh, at at the door get him in inside safely and uh <clears throat> yeah he was unconscious all the way to the hospital and uh we didn't know what 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 occurred there and uh they called afterwards from the hospital that asking me that uh, was i the one that uh was winching him up uh, or escorting him uh, i said uh, yes and uh, uh and then she asked that uh, did, did i carry a gun and i was like no, no, I didn't carry a gun at that that time. And uh, well, uh, they they had found a bullet in his uh, other lung that has had collapsed uh, because of this bullet. So uh, uh, this uh, okay, <laughs> it, this person had had tried tried to commit suicide with a with a fairly uh, small caliber rifle, and. Uh, he had uh, shot him himself in, in, in the lung and it had, it had collapsed. And uh, this was the reason that uh, the person actually got unconscious during the, during the winch. And uh, then, yeah, that was sort of something that uh, you didn't expect. Although you had some sort of, uh, your intuition said that there's nothing, everything's not right here. You didn't still know what what it was. Holy smoke, dude! Wow. Uh, and uh, that that's that's actually one uh, the one case that uh, I have had other others also uh, where we had uh, uh, these uh, situations in the helicopter door when we are winching with the strap that uh, the patient starts to sort of slip a little bit. From, from the strap yeah and uh, and I did my uh, my thesis in, 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 in the paramedic school about 
the physiological effects of winching equipment where this uh, strap is very in a, in a key role in this uh, because in a way uh, it's 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 uh, it's fairly a risky device i can understand that sometimes it, it's the only option but but in a way you have to you have to know that, that there's there are certain risks involved when using the strap and uh, agree you should sort of sort of uh, approach it in a way where uh, it's the it's the, it's the last last option in the toolbox so to speak and yeah. only use it in the in the water operations and so forth yeah i am um, so i i really agree with you on that one and, and i like the quick strap i use or the strap all right so for everybody out there uh there's there's a there's a strap which is more like uh like it used to be called a horse collar back in the day and it has a chest strap that you can use to tighten it up if you're talking about the one that lsc makes or similar um, and then there's a quick strop, which has actually a crotch strap, which comes to, or from the back around up. And I, I like using that too, but I really like using, uh, CMC makes like a, the, the Bowman screamer suit P1 offers the, uh, Aved, you know, these other ones that, that kind of wrap you up and you sit in like a lazy boy coming up. And it's one mm -hmm. of the most comfortable rides that I do as a, as a victim or a patient. Because you know, it's something we train on. I'm sure you guys do the same. Where you ride yeah. as a patient and the survivor and the mm -hmm. rescuer. So it's that's one of the things about gear that's out there. The new gear and, and playing with new stuff and using new stuff or even the old stuff and just trying mm -hmm. to make it better for everybody. So, but you're right. The quick yeah. drop is uh, it can be a very dangerous tool if you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, yeah. We also have the Avid event or hot seat or whatever you call it uh these yeah. devices also but but I, at the time in, in in the late 90s we did those didn't exist yet so. <laughs> right yeah yeah oh yeah. i know i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, the hot seat that, that's sort of the other one i was thinking about a great piece of equipment um it, yeah. it makes in my opinion again just my opinion it's it's very uh it's a great piece of equipment that you can use for hoisting rescue. Uh, the hardest part about yeah. it is water. Like it's, you can't work. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's tough to you. That's yeah. where you, I would lean towards a quick strop or rescue basket all day long. Yeah. So we have, uh, actually, uh, sort of, uh, made, made a plan about, uh, when, if we were to evacuate the passenger vessel vessel that we would use this avid type devices and uh, we have actually like purchased uh, a lot of those uh, to, so we can kind of bring a lot of those into helicopter so we can uh, change uh, or dress up already on deck and so they are always ready for the hoist so to pick up quicken up the, the hoisting procedure when when uh, when winching uh, a lot of people that's a great idea great idea and that way yeah. you can just, you know, you can go down, you can load a whole bunch up and let's say you send five up at once, you know, the guy up mm. in the aircraft that can take them all off and send all five of them right back down in one hoist yeah. is your next five. Oh, that's yeah. great. Smart move. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, uh, back in the days when, uh, when I talked about, about the first mission, we used, uh, the straps also for, or any 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 uh, like a hand doctor, they didn't have their own harnesses, so they were winched down with the strap. Uh, and yeah. uh, and until until like uh, the first two years when I was a rescue swimmer, we used the strap uh, in in water operations. That was the only device for us in, in water operations. So wow. So and that does to deploy down to the water. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, that, and we got well, got the harness harness in in in, uh, in early two thousand or something like that. Very nice. We we had we had a harness, uh, but it was uh, due to the quick lock mechanism that we had uh, by I think it was by Airborne Systems. Nice. It wasn't. Uh, 
reliable to use in, in salty water. So you sort of had to, had to use it in, in only in dry operations, winching to chip decks or whatever. Gotcha. Gotcha. Which that makes it a little difficult with being a rescue swimmer and all. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it, it's quite straining to hang on, on, onto the strap for like, 15, 20 minutes doing, doing winches from, from water. So. Right. Right. I, I am very thankful. Um, since I started this, you know, 20 years ago, I have pretty much always been in a harness. Um, we were required like while I was in the coast guard to, to be hoisted by the strop. Uh, you know, it was just part of our, uh, minimum requirements that we had to do throughout the time. Mm. So, you know, but other than that, I really, I, I would clip into my harness and I, we, I've been very blessed to have that my entire career. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's, but out of curiosity, like your doctor, do your doctors and stuff now, do they train with a harness? Do they put a harness on and get hoisted down with the harness? Yeah. Yeah. We, we have like the same harnesses that we use from, from light flight. It's like a waist harness. We have extra harnesses in, in the base that uh, the doctors can use. And, uh, now, uh, they get like a one day training familiarized for the hoist, hoisting stuff. And uh, back in the days, they didn't get any any sort of education for the fantastic for the Yeah. Um, I, I've run into that a little bit where I'm at now. And a lot of the paramedics here will come out and they get like a, a one day ground school training. Hey, here's a familiarization with the gear and boom, let's go. And then, yeah, you know, they're, they're just kind of, we back them up as far as myself and other guys. So we'll go down together and, you know, cause we're there yeah. to help the uh, local paramedics. So, but yeah. smooth, super smart. And, and I'm all about the training in and, and guys that, that could be even on the hook for a minute. It could be a small minute possibility, but just go mm -hmm. out and do it two or three times. That way, You'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember this. I remember yeah. seeing this. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, exactly. Nice. nice. Yeah. Well, what, what other other cases do I remember? There was one. Uh, this is also a long time ago. We had, uh, which is quite a typical mission here in, in Finland when we have uh, ice cover in the, okay. in the, in the sea. Ice cover in the sea, all, like so the whole yeah. sea freezes over. Yeah, but it depends on the winter. Sometimes it's okay. just the, the shoreline or or if it's a heavy winter, even the, the whole of Gulf of Finland can be covered with, with ice. Wow. So there's like ice icebreakers making fairways for the for the cargo ships and, and whatnot in in the in the harbor area or in the in the sea. But anyways, the Finnish People do all sort of activities on, on the ice, driving uh, ski this uh, ski mobiles or what do you call them? In, uh, in snowmobiles, sleds, ski doos, ski doos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do ice fishing and uh, uh, and, and everything. So uh, we had a person who had uh, the ice had broken underneath him, uh, an, an ice fisher and. Uh, he was like our uh, flight time to the scene was about maybe 30, 40 minutes. And uh, he had fallen through the ice and he had managed to stay on, uh, stay conscious in, in, in the icy waters for, for like 50 minutes or so. Wow. And uh, he was just pulled by the local uh, rescuers. He was pulled out from the from the from the water and uh, as they pulled him out uh, his uh, heart went to he went to cardiac cardiac arrest and uh, and uh, they started CPR with him and uh, we loaded him to the helicopter and we got advice from the local and uh, EMS supervisor that we should uh, uh, commence CPR en route to a university hospital where we have this ECMO treatment available where you would like uh, circulate the blood 
blood and warm it up yeah little by little so 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 this person we like manually did cpr for like 40 30 40 minutes uh, in the helicopter and uh, at the time we didn't have these uh, uh, cpr devices that that do the do all the pumping we have those now and this guy was like 70 years old or something like that an old man and uh, he survived this uh, incident 100% and walked out to from the hospital so oh snap <laughs> mic drop that's awesome holy yeah. god so I, I mean for everybody out there that's not in medicine and stuff if you're talking cpr for for more, really more than about 20 minutes, there's a very slim chance you're coming back. You're talking almost a, an hour, plus or minus uh, some, yeah. maybe a 40 minute flight, plus a hoist, mm. plus they started CPR originally. You're, you're over an mm. hour worth of CPR. And you get him yeah. into the hospital and they, and they bring him back to life and he walks out a couple of days later. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, uh, of course, the... Uh, Hypothermia in general, it's it's a bit con- controversial. It can it can kill you, but it, it also protects you when you when you do it this way that you sort of go unconscious through hypothermia and to cardiac arrest. You have brought down your core temperature to a level that it sort of protects your brain in, right. in that sense. So that yeah. that what's made made this possible and also though i have to say that uh, it's it's it, you know it, overall it's it's the chain that the first responders on scene and, and yeah. us and then the hospital that oh yeah save this person i 100 percent agree it, it's from the beginning yeah. to the end you have so many people that are that are caring for one person oh, great job yeah. on everybody that's props yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That dude should have left there and walked into the local store and bought a lottery ticket and said, I'm a winner yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He was wow. actually an, 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 an inventor. There was a, like a documentary bro- program on television that I saw about him afterwards, years after this incident. So oh, was that's, kind of that's awesome. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Good for him, man. You've had a couple yeah. good ones. I, I know you mentioned a couple more too, because you mentioned something about a capsized boat to me. Yeah, these these were the latest uh, sort of uh, uh, cases that uh, uh, also are are in the in the national media somehow. There was like a few years ago, there was a capsized uh, pilot boat that uh, they were on on their way to pick up their pilot from the from the vessel and uh, for, for for some reason uh, there was some sort of strange uh, I don't know these terms actually in English but so, sort of cross waves behind oh. this vessel that okay. uh, yeah. sort of turned out to turn the, the boat over and uh, the crewmen got uh, stuck inside the cabin and uh, they could, couldn't get out. From, from there and uh, we got the call and uh, uh, we had to stay at the base to wait for for a couple of divers that we have just had just initiated uh, cooperation with uh, with the local fire department to bring in divers when when needed and uh, and about diving I have to have to say that until 2013 uh, most of the rescue swimmers were also, divers so we we actually during these uh i i ice times we carried along uh, a small kit diving kit with us that we could we could do sort of a, a shallow shallow dive dive safely to maybe try to bring someone up from from the water wow that's great now defi- like shallow dive anything above five meters three meters yeah maybe on under not not below ten meters at least. Okay. Oh, so you, yeah. you can actually yeah. go quite quite a ways down. I mean, ten meters is thirty feet for again all my imperial friends. Um, yeah. Yeah, man, that, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, well, we got we got on sea with divers, and we started uh, our initial plan was to winch down uh, the rescue swimmers and and the divers to a patrol boat that was nearby. But uh, this uh, uh, I have to remind that it was uh, it's, it, it was in December and in the evening time, and it's it's pitch black in in Finland at that time of year. So pitch black, especially and cold. in the sea. <laughs> yeah, pitch black and cold. Yeah. So, All right, so I remember uh, that stuff from being in Alaska. Yeah, it was it was dark yeah. and cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's much similar. Yeah, in Finland. So uh, yeah, we 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 couldn't uh, for some reason we weren't able to winch down to this patrol boat, and uh, it li- later turned out that uh, they had some. Uh, some malfunction in their steering or something like that. It was kind of a wild, wild situation and we couldn't do it. And then we decided to winch directly uh, on top of the cat-sized uh, boat. And uh, that was a success. And uh, yeah, we started uh, diving immediately. Uh, divers went into, all the other diver went into the water and uh, I started uh, knocking on the, on the do- bottom of the, vessel because it was it was fairly high afloat in the water so there was uh, definitely some sort of uh, air pocket inside inside yeah. the hull but i could i could hear the water splashing inside the water inside the inside the boat but i could i didn't get any response and uh and uh, well, the clock was already ticking ticking and uh one of the divers spotted right away when he went, went into the water that uh, the rear door was open. And I called this out for the helicopter right away. That uh, it was sort of a thought came to my mind that, uh, that maybe, maybe someone had, had got, got, gotten out anyway. So they would sort of commence search also, also in the area for persons in water. And yeah, uh, well, the time was ticking. It was already like over half or half an hour had had passed. So uh, I uh, suggested to the divers that uh, no no unnecessary risks are no longer necessary because if if they have drowned, they are already dead. Nothing is to be done anymore. So right, agreed. So they didn't enter enter the cabin the divers because there was there's always a risk that it starts to sink and uh, there was like maybe 20 30 meters water water in in that area so it could sink fairly deep and it's dangerous if you, if you get stuck inside inside right. there so yeah well we did find them and uh, uh they started to retrieve this uh boat with with the coast guard vessel that also arrived the scene and uh, they uh, sort of brought in some stabilization first, some uh, airbags and uh, their attempt was to turn over over the boat. And uh, during this attempt, uh, uh, something broke, attachment broke in the boat and it, it sank, sank. And uh, the next day, the uh, divers drove into the into the boat and uh, they found the the crewman inside inside the uh, boat. So yeah, tough. And uh, and la- last summer we had uh, another where our own coast guard uh, sank as they uh, they were doing a routine routine uh, patrol and uh, they uh, went to to uh, they drove into a rock and. Uh, broke the hull and uh, it started sinking and uh, they started to evacuate the boat and uh, bringing all the important stuff out of the boat. And during this uh, evacuation, it sank and the time frame was something like, uh, I think, believe it was about six minutes when wow. they had uh, hit the ground and the boat had sank. So wow. during this... Uh, that's, evacuation. That's, that's really yeah, fast. That's, yeah, but still it was the situation in, in the beginning was sort of a calm, sort of calm because they 
thought they had all the time they needed to bring all the important gear, guns and so forth out of the patrol boat. And uh, during this uh, maneuver, they, the, the, the stern from, from the boat, it, it, it sank and uh, one or two, pers- two crew members actually got stuck inside and uh, the other one got out from a small uh, roof window and the other one didn't get out. And, uh, and yeah, we, we were arriving, we arrived the scene uh, and uh, we also got divers on board the helicopter at that time. And uh, we took the divers into a patrol boat and they dove, dove the guys, the guy out from the, from the boat. And uh, we started CPR, although the time frame was a little bit tight, but uh, since it was one of our own, we decided that we will do everything possible, and we uh, commenced CPR on route to to a hospital. But uh, he unfortunately he was pronounced dead dead right 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 after my report in the in the hospital. So. Mm. Yeah, that's too bad. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's it is amazing what we are called out to do. You never know, you never know. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I think it's important to talk about you know like training, everything that we train for. We train for the basics. You know, we throw a little bit of advanced stuff in there for ourselves. But you never know what you're going out to do. So yeah, yeah, uh, and it's so, also always sad when you have these professional maritimers that. Get get to an incident like this, and and although they also prepare prepare for the worst and train do survival training and everything, but something sometimes just there's just nothing you can do. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you guys for giving it everything you got uh, to to try. I mean, it's yeah. what we do. That that is what we do. So yeah. Man, I can't thank yeah. you enough for sharing these stories. This has been, uh, like I said, you guys do an incredible job out there in, in Finland. And, and it's, I'm glad that we can we can tell everybody out there, like, yeah, you guys are pretty badass out there. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, now, I, I want to kind of touch on a couple other things because, you know, like, what is, like, all right, so you guys do all this rescue stuff. I mentioned uh, just a second ago about training. What do you guys do for training for yourselves? To, for physical training, for you know, uh, paramedic training? Is it, you know, what is it that you guys have that you keep up on? Uh, well, uh, we have uh, uh, annual test, physical tests for, for rescue swimmers that include uh, a running test. Uh, a physical test and, and swimming tests and these all all, all of these tests are, are run uh, during the day like you don't have that much much rest af- after the other and uh, there's uh, like a, you collect points from each test and you have to sort of get to a minimum 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 points to pass the test Nice. And uh, the test, the test itself is is it's it's pretty demanding. So it kind of generates to do that 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 the rescue swimmers do. They have to train to 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 be able to pass the test. And uh, as for paramedic training, uh, obviously we don't have enough like. Uh, EMS related missions that you would kind of be feel com- confident of, about what you do. Yeah. So uh, we we do some uh, training with with the fire departments in a way that we are in in the ambulance as as third uh, or those that are uh, licensed uh, paramedics. In Finland, paramedics are also registered nurses, so they can also do jobs uh, aside their work, as I have been doing in a in a, in a pri- private company uh, before Corona 
uh, now that the epidemic epidemic uh, the coronavirus came uh, we were kind of told that we couldn't couldn't do any any jobs outside the border guard to to, pre- pre- to prevent from the virus to spread gotcha. so so but it's it's important that you do some kind of uh, paramedic training and uh, and also we do we have like a, a specific uh, training sort of cards or one for each month that we are obligated to do and it's it's in the hangar we do and uh, we sort of touch one one subject at the time and look at the theory and uh, then do maybe a like a practical training with a with a CPR dummy or or whatever oh that's great that's great we used to do the same thing um actually i've done the same thing at every job really is is you picked up that month is you know uh trauma you know this next month yeah. is going to be um hypothermia you know and you've got the next yeah. month that's cardiac and so on yeah. and so forth it's yeah it's it's great it's great yeah. I, I think that's yeah. a really smart move good for you guys yeah um man you guys, it's pretty impressive. Right? Like just listening to everything you're telling me, the, the whole physical fitness test too. I can't say yeah. enough about what we do. You have to stay physically fit. You forget, I mean, you never know what we're going to get launched to and you got to be ready. So yeah, I, I totally agree with you. But, um, yeah, um, and it's, it's important uh, when recruiting also. I understand that in, in the U.S. it's 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 a lot different because you have you have the a school and uh, you have uh, very uh, rugged sort of standards regarding all the all the physical stuff for the rescue swimmers but this isn't the case all around the world and uh, and uh, for us uh, when i applied we had sort of a standard that uh, in my generation all the guys that came in they came through the finnish navy conscription so that was sort of sort of uh, our boot camp uh, when you think about about the water and so on so you have to have that a very high level of confidence when you operate in water so that's that's one one i think main thing that relates to the rescue swimmer competence uh, yeah yeah there there is something to be said about that too because there are a lot of people that are, are physically strong enough. Um, they have the capability, they have the endurance, but as soon as you put a water element into it and now all of a sudden you can't breathe and you're asked to do the same thing, mm. it's it's a whole nother world. And I've watched guys freak as soon as their head goes underwater. And it, it's just another, yeah. that next level crazy as I'm gonna yeah. call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, and I have to say that I have, I have a very, uh, I, I was a competitive swimmer when I was uh, young and uh, and uh, looking back at the Finnish Navy Diver School where we had guys who, who were very fit, but they didn't have this sort of experience in uh, or training in water, and uh, but they still got through and they, they really fought their way and that <laughs> that that's where when you really sort of see the mentality tested there or yeah. certain, certain individuals there yeah so my hats off for those guys who don't have that kind of background for yeah but the drive not to quit is 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 huge and it's a mindset yeah. you got to go in there with a yeah. that specific mindset of it, you, you're not going to beat me yeah. I, i'm going to win and i'm not quitting I will, I yeah, will make it yeah. through. Yeah, awesome. It's true. Oh, love it. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to open the floor up to you a little bit. Uh, whatever you want to talk about from safety to equipment. I am always curious to, to know what you guys use and, and any recommendations that you might have for anybody else. And I, I know I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but. So uh, as I uh, already talked a little bit about this in the, in the pre- previous podcast, but uh, the initial uh, sort of idea for me at least was that uh, we would get connected with people around the world and uh, sort of see what kind of gear people, people use. And 
sort of the mentality was at that stage, maybe in the Finnish border guard, that uh, we invent everything ourselves, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and that's not 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 a really a productive way to approach this. So yeah, but you guys so do such I, a good job. What do you need the rest of us for? <laughs> 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 you can always do better. You know, I, you I have work, learned stuff from yeah. all over you guys. So sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it, it's it is impressive yeah. to see it. I, I like I like what you guys are doing with this because you get that aspect yeah. from everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would uh, sort of I really rec- recommend for any any rescue swimmer or or flight paramedic or helicopter hoist operator that works with 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 SAR. So to get connected with 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 your with your peers internationally and uh, and yeah and Eurosa is a very good platform for for this. There's hardly no expenses in joining, but of course we have certain rules that uh, you have to meet certain requirements to be able to become a member with, with the association. So, which is awesome. I like that. Yeah. Like actively, you you have to be an active rescue swimmer participating in some unit somewhere. Uh, yeah. Plus pass a PT test, which is awesome. I like that yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we actually have got some really good feedback from that uh, that test. There was a point where I heard heard rumors that some big operators were looking at this test to bring their it to their regime and. Like big, big companies, I'm not saying saying any names here, but yeah. And, you know, that, uh, we, that's we a big have... compliment. Like, I, I, yeah, I mean that's that's a big thank you. Like, I, I for me it is. I mean, I'm like, oh wow. Hey, if you if you feel that I'm doing this and you're going to implement what I'm saying or what we're doing over here, oh, I take that yeah. as a major compliment. That's fantastic. Yeah, good for you guys. Yeah. I think uh, I believe I heard from uh, from Dennis from Estonia, Estonian rescue swimmer. Who, he actually did did the uh, navy navy course in the U.S. I don't know if you know him, but yeah. Uh, anyway, Den- he he told Janos Dennis, or yeah. Dennis. I I don't know Dennis. I know Janos. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he told me that uh, they they are at some point that they would be taking the Eurosa test into their regime and uh, also in the Finnish border guard we have already uh, already suggested changes to the test to our our sort of Finnish border guard main headquarters that we would implement this test also in in the Finnish border guard and it's, nice. it's still not official but we are trying to trying to go there very nice, very nice. That, that's great, and, and that's yeah, a, that and makes I, it standard around the world too. If you or you know throughout Eurosa, if, if everybody's doing the same test, you know yeah. that when you get in the water to go to, especially with you guys with such tight communities and and countries around, mm. you know, um, if you have a swimmer show up, you know he's passed that same test that you have. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's pretty good. I like that. It's a good test. Uh, where we have like uh, basic swimming without gear, and then we have swimming with with the gear, and we have some uh, like uh, uh, victim toe simulation included with the, yep. with the weight there, and uh, and also some diving with with when your heart heart rate is really up. This is uh, one key element I think is important in this test that because it, it's a it's it's mentally challenging also. Or if immediately, if you are not confident in yourself and uh, you have your heart rate up at a level of uh, maybe 170 or 160, and you are told to hold your breath and start diving, it's uh, for for guys or girls who are not confident doing it, they just can't do it. Agreed. Yeah. It, well, yeah. I, and I I've read the test multiple times. Um, I, I do like the underwater you have. That's at 25 meters underwater, pushing the the, yeah. the four kilo kilo four kilo brick yeah. or weight. Yeah. yeah. So out of curiosity, does it have to touch the bottom of the pool or, you know, like am I pushing a lot? Yeah, you have to. You have you have to sort of sort of uh, the the weight has to glide in the bottom of the pool, and okay. you can resurface as many times you 
as you wish, but you can't bring the weight up. So you have to always start when you leave where you leave the brick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've had guys actually, Ben Darlington, our president, also taking videos where uh, the clock is actually ticking in, in, in the corner of the video too. So I believe him that he can do it under nine minutes or whatever he did. Ooh, he did all right. Once. <laughs> okay so you set the bar high all right yeah but uh, anyway at, about the test we are sort of uh during these uh meetings rescue swimmer meetings we have been collected uh like data to figure out what a minimum standard could be and uh it looks like uh, a 12 minute uh minimum standard would would, would be good Nice. So in a sense, it, it, it's sort of in the same philosophy as the U.S. Coast Guard uh, rescue swimmer PT testing that uh, it's not hard, but uh, if it feels hard, you really have to start doing something with yourself. <laughs> that is a true that. statement right there. Get yeah. on a treadmill, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find that Versa climber. Get on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I like it. Yeah, I, I think what you guys are doing there with Eurosa is just awesome. And, you know, I, yeah, I, I'm happy to be a part of it. I am looking forward to our next meeting or your next meeting and me being able to join you mm -hmm. guys. Um, it's just going to be, it's going to be fun. And like I said, I, I think it's brilliant what you guys are doing as far as the community opening up, trying to share tips and tricks. And uh, so solid work. So thank you for yeah. allowing me to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, we are very happy to have you have you part. Oh, thanks, man. It's an honor. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I, I've taken a bunch of your time, uh, but before we go, is there any tips and tricks you want to give to anybody else out there? Uh, well, if you want to become uh, like uh, like a rescue swimmer, and uh, you are sort of maybe training training for or to to like be, becoming a conscript at, at Finnish Navy divers or what, whatever is very uh, challenging physically I would recommend to train uh, a lot whatever is your weakness work on the weakness yes yeah I like that <laughs> that is some great advice right there I love it well, Sammy, thank you so much. I, I can't thank you enough, really, for coming on and, and just sharing more of your stories. What you guys are doing is incredible. I love it. So thank you. Thank you, Jason. All right. It's, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Mine as well. So thank you. And, uh, and I'll see you next time for sure. All right? Yeah. Sweet. Good. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Real Rescue Podcast. Please take a minute and like my daughters like to tell me, like and subscribe. Oh yeah. I'm pulling chocks and taking off. But before I go, if anyone out there has a rescue story that they would be willing to share, I would be humbled and honored to have you as a guest. Or if you have any questions about any of the rescues or anything else that we talk about here on this podcast, send me an email therealrescue at gmail.com that's t-h-e-r-e-a-l-r-e-s-q at gmail.com you can also check us out on our facebook and instagram page at the real rescue that's at t-h-e-r-e-a-l-r-e-s-q i also want to give a special thank you to all of you standing on the watch today always remember that when that sar alarm goes off those in distress are praying for a miracle. They are going to get you. Until next time, fly safe and swim hard. <laughs>